Hello, environmental science class, and welcome to another mini lesson. This time, we're going to be looking at roles of organisms in ecosystems. All right, so right now, we're going to be starting at the essentially base or part of the base of the food web with what we call the primary producers. These are organisms that can use um, different elements from the environment, whether it's sunlight or different chemicals from the water. Um, to essentially help produce their own food source. And so we're going to look at a very specific type of primary producer, and that's a um, class of primary producers called photoautotrophs. So don't let the vocabulary kind of scare you away. So break down this word and kind of make sense of what they do. So photo refers to light, auto is self, Troph means to feed. So these are organisms that are going to use sunlight to essentially feed themselves um, and produce food via a process called photosynthesis. So we have plants, algae, and some bacteria that can perform this process. And so here's what um, photosynthesis looks like that uh, these photoautotrophs are performing. So again, they're going to be using sunlight here and also carbon dioxide from the atmosphere and water from the ground. And they're going to be performing a series of chemical reactions, um, collectively called photosynthesis, where they're going to be producing their food source in the form of sugars, more specifically glucose, and also release oxygen as that waste product. And that's the oxygen that we breathe in. So thank you, primary producers, for producing that oxygen. However, like us or your dog or your cat, we can't produce our own food. We have to consume our own food. So we're consumers, um, more fancy name for us, meaning, uh, you know, um, eh, for more fancy name for us are heterotrophs. Hetero means different. Troph means to feed. So we're feeding on different things, different organisms for energy and nutrients. And so it could be feeding on plant material, um, animal, you know, meat material, or maybe even a combination of both. And so there are different levels of consumers that we're going to go over in just a few slides. However, in order to obtain the energy stored in our food, us as consumers or heterotrophs, we must perform a process in our cells, in the mitochondria of our cells, called cellular respiration. And so we're going to be using oxygen from the environment and other stuff um, to help release and break down um, that energy so we can then use that energy to you know, live and do stuff. So both primary producers and consumers <laughs> um, perform cellular respiration, so don't forget that. So primary producers do both. They do photosynthesis during the day to get the food, and then cellular respiration at night to then uh, you know, break down and release the energy from the food that they just made during the day. And so the waste product from that is going to be carbon dioxide. So you can see carbon dioxide does get released from plants um, and also gets released by us as we are exhaling. And then also water is another waste product, usually in the form of water vapor. And so remember, there are different levels of consumers because there are different things, you know, different consumers feeding on different types of, of matter, plant or animals. So um, the first level of consumer is called primary consumer, a.k.a. herbivores. So primary consumers, these are guys um, they are going to be feeding on those primary producers, whether it's like leaves on a tree, grass like deer or grasshoppers. These are all primary consumers. They feed on primary producers, and they all are herbivores. Then the second level of consumers are secondary consumers. So if you like to eat um, rabbit, for example, or a cow um, or a steak, you're acting like a secondary consumer because you're feeding on a primary consumer. So here we have a cheetah feeding on a gazelle. That's a primary consumer, so the cheetah is acting like a secondary consumer. Same thing with this owl feeding on the mouse that recently fed on that grass. 
typically ecosystems don't have um, anything higher than tertiary consumers, which we'll go over why that is in another lesson. But tertiary means third or third level. So these are the third level consumers, and they're going to be feeding on the level below them, feeding on those secondary consumers. So seals typically eat fish, and a lot of fish are primary consumers. So the seal is a secondary consumer. Therefore, this great white shark is a tertiary consumer. And again, looking at the bald eagle here, if this fish here is a secondary consumer, then this bald eagle here is acting like a tertiary consumer. And so the secondary and tertiary consumers, these are collectively, you know, called the carnivores. They're eating meat, you know, different types of meat. So quick practice. This little cricket, it's feeding on this leaf. What is it? Awesome. Primary consumer. What about this little mouse feeding on, getting like little sweet treats from the flower? Primary. Perfect. What about this bird that ate the caterpillar? I remember caterpillars eat like grass and leaves. Awesome. That bird is a secondary consumer. What about this mouse that ate a cricket? Perfect. That is a acting like a secondary consumer. And what about if a fox grabbed this mouse and ate it? Perfect. That fox is acting like a tertiary consumer. And what about this bald eagle that ate this bird that ate a primary consumer fish? Awesome. Then that bald eagle also is acting like a tertiary consumer. But you might be wondering, like, besides if you're a vegetarian, you, you know, like, well, I feed on, you know, more than just, you know, plants all the time or more than just meat all the time. I'm kind of feeding at, you know, as a different levels of consumers all the time, which is true. So we have another group of organisms called omnivores based on their feeding habits. So they're going to be um, eating, you know, plant and animal uh, material in their diet. So you see here's um, this brown bear here eating the berries, acting like a primary consumer. But then we have this um, brown bear here then eating the fish, acting like maybe a secondary or even a tertiary consumer. So there's definitely a lot of overlap in um, feeding habits in a lot of organisms. It all depends on maybe like what they're encountering during that time and also kind of depends on what their food source ate prior as well. And so there's another group of organisms that feed on stuff that are not living but are dead. So we call those scavengers. So we have this vulture here is a really good example of something that will just feed on that dead carcass of whatever that is. I don't know, donkey or horse? Can't tell. But now we go down to the ground, there's another really um, two, like they're like the last two groups or two rules of organisms that are super, super, super important and that they help to recycle nutrients back into the environment. So we have detritivores. These are uh, like earthworms and millipedes that will eat leaf litter, which is those dead leaves covering the forest floor, um, other waste products, and then they poop out those nutrients. And that's helping to recycle those nutrients back into the environment. And then we have a group that you're probably more familiar with, the decomposers. And so um, these guys have very similar roles, the detritivores, except they're feeding and breaking down different things. So um, typically we have like, you know, bacteria in the ground responsible for breaking down, let's say, a lot of um, animal remains or say human remains. And then we have a lot of like fungi and stuff growing on rotting um, material as well. And they're going to be breaking down, returning those nutrients back into the environment. So therefore, a primary producer could absorb it maybe through the roots and use it for growth. All right, guys, that completes our lessons on roles of organisms and ecosystems. Until next time, don't forget to finish your notes and complete those questions. Bye.